So we're certainly on the sunny side of the mountain today here in Pakuka and the last day of racing in the Biathlon World Championships. It's, we've seen some excellent racing uh, and the last couple of days we've been spoilt for tight races. And uh, this morning, a little bit of history. Austria getting their first women's individual gold medal at a Biathlon World. And Lisa Theresa Hauser over the moon with her performance, and so she should be, shooting 20 out of 20. The only athlete out of the 30 starters to achieve that mark. As the camera was going over the penalty loop, Patrick, I was just wondering how many of the men will avoid it. Probably what? One, maybe two. Monsalomo, winner of the first of the individual events, the sprint. Jacqueline won the pursuit in some style. His standing shooting in a league of its own. Ligrid, the individual champion. Never has he faced such pressure. Did he waver? Not a bit of it. Absolutely tremendous. Seb Samuelsson, for me, the best performance in the men's relay yesterday to bring Sweden home in silver medal position. And uh, their tally of medals now at six. Arm Pfeiffer, so close to getting gold again in the individual. A man who knows how to rise to the occasion at the Worlds. Johannes Tiesbo has not had it all his own way. He's got a bag full of medals, but no gold from individual races. Is today the day? So let's cast our eye down the uh, start sheet. Mike, do you want to pick out your favourites? Well, I have a, you mentioned Sam Wilson's uh, relay yesterday. He just looked so strong, so comfortable uh, on his skis and uh, very limited movement through his rifle. I think he'll be well up for today. So he's certainly in my top three. Further down the order and... Uh, the bigger the number, the less likely they are to win. I think you can argue that because of their position in the World Cup. Uh, interesting stat for you, Mike. Uh, of the first 15, 14 have won races. Uh, if you add all their races up, bar one man, it comes to 51. If you take the 15th man, which of course is Johannes Tingis, he's got 52. <laughs> but uh, if you then include Loginoff, uh, the rest of the field just outnumber him by two victories. Uh, gives you some measure of how successful Johannes as Tingis Burr has been over the last four years. Yeah, that's, that's an incredible stat. And I do think that uh, Johannes will be back uh, around his best. Remember the last day last year of the World Championships, he took that title, didn't miss any targets. And he has the ability, when required most, uh, to dig deep and find his magic through the rifle as well. Hopefully that is again today. But isn't he going through the same phase in his career that we saw with Poiret, we saw with Bjorn Dahlen? Ultimately, we saw with Fourcard, where you no longer have that 50-second, 60-second advantage on the skis. You have to shoot to win. And, uh, you know, in the past, Bjorn Dahlen could miss a couple and still think of winning a mass start. Yes, and that has to affect the mindset. And uh, Johannes Tingisbo has adjusted his style. He's adjusted for completely changed the rifle. And he's altered his rhythm in shooting to cater for that, to try and hit more targets. But it hasn't really worked here. I'd like to see you doing that, Mike. <laughs> hey, Benny, no, I think Benny, 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 no, I think he's going to, uh, I'm hoping he's going to have a good one today. Certainly skiing fast enough. Yeah, shooting, obviously the key here. We're back with Thomas on uh, our final tour of these tracks in Pukuka. Into almost 400 meters long ascent, Short S. Downhill and the highest point of the loop, 1,371 meters. Tricky left turn downhill on the top and pushing hard. Second split time. The last very short but steep uphill before shooting range and 180 right turn way back to stadium. Less than three minutes remaining to the start. 
And that pretty much is it. I'm assuming Thomas Klopodzik was uh, was uh, racing back in 2001, Mike, at the World Championships, last time they were held here. He certainly was. Uh, and uh, from memory, yes, he placed top 10 a couple of times. He, he was a very, very good biathlete and very fast on his skis. So we are just about ready to go. The uh, official timer just checking his watch. Uh, just over two minutes by my count. Uh, everyone eager to get this one underway. 15,000 metres. It's a 15K race. Four shoots in all. Prone, prone, stand, stand. And it could be the prone that trips up this man. Johannes Tingis Burr. Uh, he played a big part in the relay yesterday, as did his brother. Norway, of course, doing the double in the uh, medals yesterday and uh, that took their tally of golds to six they now have one more medal than they won last year in Antolt but the same number of golds are they going to add to it today Sweden certainly have a chance of denying them Ponsoloma and Samuelsson on very very good form and the French Phil Moyet and Jacqueline Detour don't forget him and Cloud also Just seconds to go before the final race of the Bath and World Championships. Welcome if you've just joined us here in Pakuka. And the gun is ready. They have the start. 30 athletes in the field. The medalists from these championships. Everyone in the top 15 in the World Cup standings. And those who have accrued the most World Cup points over the races over the last 11 days here in Pakuka. So creme de la creme, the best in the world. Uh, no excuses. But, Mike, there are, uh, what, seven athletes who've done every race so far. Samuelson, Johannes Tingisbo, Lucas Hoffer, Jakob Fack, probably the most noticeable of those. It's a busy program, and if you're the best in your country, like Johannes Tingisbo, Hofer, you're going to be pulled in. But uh, with that comes fatigue today. And I'm just wondering, it looks like Johannes Tingisbo wants to traditionally, I think, we can safely say this first lap uh, of three kilometres can be quite slow. It looks like Johannes wants to take the sting out of many. Yeah, we've often uh, queried his approach of leading early on. Lukas Hoff is another man who likes to be out front. He's coming up making uh, good ground. Uh, the Italians and the French suits very easy to uh, muddle up over these championships. <laughs> We've done it on a few occasions. Uh, and, and talking about muddling up athletes, I do apologise. It was Tandrevold uh, who, who I said was on the ground after the women's race. It was actually Roysland who was on the ground in floods of tears, having missed out on an individual medal, uh, beaten by her teammate Ekhoff over the last five or six metres. It was quite an interesting picture. Ekhoff trying to console her, uh, who just passed her by a toenail uh, to the line. Do you think Ekhoff should have held back? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't. You've got to attack and keep on attacking. But I, I don't think Reuschland expected to see uh, uh, Ekhoff coming that fast uh, towards the end or to even challenge her towards the finish line. 
Yeah, I, th I, I think, to be honest, a bronze for Roisland would have met, meant so much more than a bronze for uh, Ekhoff. But it does mean that Ekhoff has the full set now, having had, what, four gold, silver, bronze. Uh, she has done some sterling work here in Pakuka and can now look forward to the end of the World Cup season. Uh, her position at the top of the table to defend. I don't think it's going to be an easy run into the season, Mike, by any stretch of the imagination. No, uh, it's still a, a busy programme to go, isn't it? With uh, two races in Novo Miesto and uh, the final up in Ostersun. Yeah, Ostersun should be fantastic. So, uh, a steady pace, I think, uh, fair to say. Fion Maillet takes his position at the front. The big guns trying to just move up. Now, Mike, they, they obviously shoot in the lane that corresponds with their big number. How difficult is it for the coaches for the mass start when they're all zeroing in different lanes? He doesn't have his team all on lane one and two. It's tough. They, they, they do bring other support staff, but when Norway, having they won this last year, Johannes Ting is four, they were allowed five athletes in this race, so Norway with five, and then uh, what do we got? We've got France, the RBU, and Sweden with four, so it does become a bit of an issue because you need to pass the information on to your athletes if they've missed, say, low left or low right, and you need to give them adjustments as they ski away, so that is a, an important part of their uh, coaching. Yeah, particularly on the first shoot. So Norway have athletes in lanes 3, 7, 8, 10, 15. There's no way Ziggy Mazze can keep his eye on all of those. Who there does he, he favour? <laughs> oh, it's tough, isn't it? And there's Patrick Fabry. Patrick Fabry, uh, when the World Championships were here in, what, 2001, he finished sixth in this race. He missed three, and, of course, he's Italian, uh, but working for the French team. Yeah, and uh, it was a pretty elite... Uh, podium on that occasion. Poiret winning. Uh, I think Oleana Bjorndalen took a fall on the last lap to lose this one. He took the silver and then Sven Fischer in third position. It was it was the most nerve-wracking race, especially the final lap, as you see, when you know, Oleana Bjorndalen fell and uh, they, they were swapping the lead towards the line a couple of times, but in the end, Poiret got it by 3.8 seconds. Yeah, Bjorn Dahlen, I don't think he ever won a sprint in his life, did he? Uh, it was not <laughs> going to happen on that occasion. Uh, best match start world championships. I, I still go back to Oslo uh, when Johannes won, Martin Foucault in second, Bjorn Dahlen in third. It was, uh, you know, really the, the past, the present and the future of biathlon all on the same podium. <laughs> I, 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 so many good races. And of course, Johannes thing is for, it's closing in on the big names in terms of World Cup wins in this event. He's got 10 victories for Cad 14 and Oleana beyond Ireland 14. Remember the format, 15 kilometers, uh, so three kilometer loops, and for every shot missed, a 150 meter penalty. So a 1% uh, penalty added uh, effectively to your distance. And that is the least uh, that they pay in any of the races. For, for the individual, Mike, it's about 2%. For the mass star, it's 1%. So the shooting, effectively, not as important. Yes, and uh, 20 years ago, uh, when it came here last, uh, Bjorn Dahlen missing three first time in. I think many said it's impossible to come back from missing three. Then he missed one in the second prone, but he still came back uh, uh, to take that silver medal. So the fast skiers really do have an advantage today. Yeah, Vindish winning in Ostersund, missing three. Uh, it was a windy day. And, uh, of course, a meltdown from Johannes Tingis Burr on that occasion as well. He had a difficult time in, up in Oscarson. And actually, uh, if he's got any weakness in his, his stats, Mike, his lists of honour, uh, it is the, the major championships where, you know, the pressure is on and everyone else has raised their game or everyone else has focused just on the world championships, whereas Johannes Tingis has always been concerned about both the World Cup and the world championships. Yes, I think it, I think uh, for Card, Martin for Card was one of the strongest when it came to majors, winning World Cups. He just didn't change, didn't feel the nerves at the major championships. Shoot number one, prone position, and all the medalists in lanes one through to eight. Filmaye in nine, Terrebo 
who leads the mass start world standings in 10. Lukas Hoffer of Italy in 11. The Italians, I thought they were going to get a medal this morning, yet to get one at these championships. Dior Mayet throws one wide, and a miss from uh, Ponsolomo as well. Johannes Tingers Bo, not one mistake, but two, and he's already making life difficult for himself. That prone shooting has been very, very poor by his standards. Pfeiffer, of course, hits five. So does Samuelson, and Ligrid, the winner of the individual, hitting 20 out of 20, has started well today. Incredible, Benny Dahl, uh, he looked good yesterday, he really doesn't look good today, missing three out of five. So how many times have we seen this with uh, Johannes Tingis having to chase from the very first instance? Out comes Phil Maillet, followed by Ponsolomo, Christiansen with one mistake at 25 seconds. And if Ligrid makes no mistakes from here, he's highly likely to hold off his teammate Johannes, whatever the world number one does over the next 12K. Welcome back to Pakuka. Mike Dixon, Patrick Winston with you for the final event of the World Championships. Some notes being made by Ziggy Maze, no doubt to be passed on to Johannes Tingisbu. Ligrid, uh, Mike, very, very solid. Um, outstanding shot for the season. Simon has been slightly better in terms of stats, but Simon Ader just doesn't have the ski speed and hasn't actually been up the front of the races where the pressure is so much greater. Yeah, Ligrid, uh, he's just head and shoulders uh, above anyone when it comes to continual good shooting and, and slight fluctuating in the ski speed during these championships, but so strong yesterday, and of course so strong in the individual when he hit 20 out of 20. So, guess what? 14 of the 30 going clear. Um, what did we have with the women? 13, I think, went clear on the first shoot. Then it was down to seven. Then it was down to two. Then it was down to one. And uh, wouldn't be surprised if only one athlete shoots clear in this race. Really, the conditions are good enough to uh, expect two or three to go perfect. But as the pressure mounts towards the end, and you've got to remember that, absolutely shattered after 11 days of uh, racing. They really are, and this is the 13, uh, sorry, the 14 who shot the perfect uh, 5 out of 5, and then uh, slowly but surely those behind, they've missed one. I think it was, uh, what do we have, uh, 12 athletes here shooting just one penalty, and three missing two. Johannes Ting is pro, one of those three. That's a, a real difficult situation now for Johannes Ting is pro. He needs to get five next time. Yeah, and Benny Doll, who was doing his stretching, has uh, stre stretched his luck. He's not going to win, Mike. Three misses on the first shoot, 118 behind. Johannes Tingis is 44 behind, down in 27th position. Uh, a little wager on what the margin will be as he comes in to shoot. From 44, he's certainly capable of getting that back to 24. It's going to be tough, the pace. I think, luckily for him, look at the pace at the front. They're not attacking. It hasn't gone full pace yet. They're all so tired. So I think Johannes may get it down to, what, 30, 28 at best when he comes in to shoot second time. Yeah, Lukas Hoffer, he's not one for hanging around. There goes uh, Jakob Fack. Good to see him going well. The red bib belonging to Tarje Bo. And uh, he's had an excellent, excellent couple of days. Delighted with his gold medal in the relay yesterday. 
just just looking, Patrick. You understand this boy's got uh, got it down to 31 already, but now that uh, Lukas Hoffer's at the front, the pace has picked up. It'll be difficult to get it down to 25. Yeah, there's no rush. No rush. He can win with two misses, but he surely can't afford any more. There's the coaches and the magnetic board. Uh, like we've been giving a picture, so clearly there was a potential to adjust the sights. And that's Dali in behind him. Yeah, Dali hasn't had as much uh, press this year as he might have done. Talia Bo with uh, a win in Oberhof, and he was third in Hockfilsen in the mass start. So with this race and one more remaining, I wonder whether he will be lifting the Crystal Globe at the end of the season. Simon Eder's uh, looking, looking easy staying with his pace, but it's his endurance as this race gets to halfway and beyond. Uh, Simon Eder, I think, will begin to lose 10, 12 seconds per, per lap. Phil Maillet was at 18, having come out of the range at 23, so he's gained a little bit, nothing too dramatic, probably wise at this stage. Uh, if you don't save some juice for the last lap, Mike, you can lose 15 seconds easily. Oh, and Johannes Tingesbo has got it down to 25, so he's pulled back, uh, what, 19 seconds. That, that's fast skiing. Yeah, he's got, he's got to within one penalty loop of uh, the leaders. So if anyone in this leading group misses one and Johannes shoots clear, uh, he will have uh, pulled level with them. It's expensive though, isn't it? He's had to really attack around the second lap of three kilometres. The front athletes have kept it a little back, uh, held it within, ready for the second shoot. The RBU will be crossing their fingers it's not been a good championship for them Latipov and Loginov uh, in 11th and 12th at the moment the RBU with one bronze medal to their name well I guess that's one bronze more than Italy have got but Hoffa has a chance well positioned at the moment Jacqueline the pursuit winner in lane one then Hoffa Dale of Norway in two Jakob Fack first to strike Samuelson uh, working left to right, Jacqueline working uh, right to left. I think we've got a problem. It's Ligrid working right to left, and Ligrid, guess what, clears another five. Fack also goes clear to give the home nation a chance, a chance. Wouldn't it be nice for them to get a medal, having hosted such an, an amazing event in such difficult circumstances. Pfeiffer, Ada, go five with five. Gao goes five with five. Johannes Tigisbo, he's more accurate this time. Just a little bit slower on the targets. Can he clear the last one? He's taken an age. Four, five seconds given away, but it's gone down, and he will move from 27th, I expect, up into the top ten. Oh, I, I, I don't know if you noticed, but Jacqueline has not hit any. Five penalty loops. What a contrast to the pursuit race where Jacqueline did not miss any. 20 out of 20. Uh, was he, was he cross-firing? I guess it's possible. We will only find out afterwards. But that is a disaster for the Frenchman.
from 13 clear after the first shoot. We are, guess what, down to six. Uh, so just a slightly severe trimming of the leaders. And uh, Christian Gow is one of them. Art Pfeiffer is there again. Simonada is up there. So it's a mixture of young and old because Samuelson and Ligrid are there. And Jakob Fackmite, eight wins in his career. It's been a long time since he got one. But this would be the moment for Jakob Fack to show us his best. I would love to see Jakob Fack win this one. He, he hasn't had a great outing here at all. Uh, the single mix really on the penalty loop. He hasn't found his his form at all mentally maybe the last day there's nothing more to lose so you're more relaxed and, and it certainly feels that way today for Jakob Fack. About 50 percent of the field have hit nine or better the fastest of those with two misses so far is of course Johannes Tingisbur he's got himself back up into the top 10 uh, last time we saw he was 29 behind we'll get another readout as they come through 7.4 kilometers Ligrid setting the pace now Fack happy to sit in behind him Seb Samuelsson of Sweden the Sweden gonna get another medal they missed out this morning in the women's mass start Hannah Erberg the... looking shattered Yes, very much. There's Johannes Tingis. He's got it down to 19 seconds. Uh, I think he'll try and push to the front of this, although Lukas Hopper uh, certainly will be setting a, a, a buzzing pace, a fast pace. So all those men are still in it. And uh, what do you think, Mike? Three clear after the third shoot? Three, maybe four. Uh, Arm Piper, we know he can. Ader most often does. Samuelson, for me, is, is on a great day. I hope he keeps that, uh, that same feeling. And, yeah, and it would, yeah, Christian, yeah, wouldn't it be great if, if Chris, Christian Gow could go clear? Uh, it would be great if the leading six all went clear, but it's it's highly unlikely. Yes, the odds uh, dwindle, don't they? The fatigue in the legs. Uh, and uh, repetition of going round this track, it's testing. You've got to have a tough mindset, which by athletes generally do. Are you going to state that our winner is in this group of five? Not yet, no. I'm uh, lightweight, of course, is such a, a fabulous biathlete, but uh, no, I think it's still open for someone from behind to, to come through. Yeah, Ada, Ligrid and Pfeiffer, the three best shots in this group. Pfeiffer, the most experienced at this sort of situation. Ligrid uh, <laughs> just seems to astound us every time he comes out on the tracks. But should it come to a ski race between those three, Mike, uh, evidence from the individual is that Pfeiffer is the strongest over the last lap. Yes, uh, he's, he's had good form here. And the early races didn't go well. He, he didn't have a shooting magic, but I found that in the individual race. There's Johannes moving to the his right or left. Yeah, well, a little bit of burst of, yeah, burst of speed from... Uh, is that Dali? Yes. It is. And I was just thinking, Samuelson up the front is in third place at the moment from the 18 World Championships in this event, so 54 medals. Sweden have only had a bronze and a silver, so Bjorn Ferry and... Freddie Lindstrom on the same day in 2012 took second and third place. High left. left. Again. Awful. Okay, Shana Brogi, it's okay. Now, what do you think that's about, Mike? Um, Jacqueline, way, way, way down after that two minutes, two and a half minutes, essentially, the gap between the leaders and him after missing five. Um, was that anything to do with changing lanes? It, not really, because he zeroed in two and he was shooting in one. It wasn't. Uh, remember, the wind was from the left uh, first time when they came in, and then the wind had died away. So you set your sights, uh, move them left, and all of the fall of his shots were well, left and high, or the majority of them. First shoot in the stand position. Ligrid is there and ready. Jakob Fack, the local man. Oh, 
always a slight advantage to be one target ahead of the rest. And Ligrid makes it four out of four, five out of five. That's 15 down for him. Can Fak make it? Yes, he can. And the, the few locals hiding in the woods appreciating that. simonade has gone clear. A rare miss from Pfeiffer. I think that may well be the last we see of Pfeiffer in terms of challenging for the podium. But uh, you don't want to say that too early on with one shoot remaining. Uh, Ligrid might looking for his second individual gold at these championships. Fak just two points six behind and actually a light grid fat race would be interesting over the last lap it would and it looks like johannes tickets isn't going to be in the mix he's gone and missed a further two targets so another 300 meters to ski his brother has hit five so tony Abo is still in with a chance uh, a slim one phil maye five out of five logging off of the rbu five out of five and uh, still a chance but 35 back for tony Abo. if he can get that to 25 then uh, if the leaders all miss if the tension is too high then maybe the world cup leader in the mass start can come through and claim a medal Well, apart from the last one, I think that's the best grouping we've we've seen in the stand position. Jakob Fack drifting low. That was uh, right in the middle. It doesn't matter where they go as long as they hit the black. And uh, Fack makes sure that last one was a tough one because he knew that Ligrid was away. Well, wasn't that interesting from Ligrid? Four of those shots would have put the full ball size target down, but he did wobble. The last shot, it was low left, but still a hit. So, so much at stake here today as we tune in on Hoffer, who's lying in fourth position at the moment. Chances are still good. Pfeiffer just behind him. Uh, 23 and 27 were the margins coming out of the range. Fastest shot was Dobjan on that last shoot, 18.5. Detour of France, 21. Ligrid, 21.7. He made that look easy. And logging off at 22. Samuelson, I was really surprised there. He, he normally gets his breathing under control. There he is just turning the corner. Now, he missed two targets. That's a, a massive setback at this stage in the race. Now, Mike, uh, because four races are going to be deducted at the end of the season, uh, it means that at the moment, if you take four races away, Ligrid effectively is only 15 points behind Johannes Tingisbo in the World Cup standings, uh, the virtual standings, and this would probably put him ahead if he could win this one. But the margin, yeah. as we stand, is 58 points. So uh, that won't change. The uh, yellow bib will stay on Johannes's shoulders when we go to Novem Yesterday. Yeah, incredibly, Johannes Tingisbo is, is only a minute five behind after that third shoot, but he's, he's missed four targets, so he, he does need another firm uh, pace around this track. He could pull another 15, 20 seconds back at best. So Mr. Cool is leading. Nothing seems to fade this man or phase him uh, I, th I thought his individual finish was amazing Mike he knew he had to hit five to win the gold medal uh, and he still looked relaxed he shot with rhythm he he didn't panic in any way or form and uh, of course came away with the gold medal yes I think all those videos or replays he's watched of Martin Foucault over the years uh, he's taken all the information that he's seen uh, the way that Martin Foucault would, would stabilize himself would, would routinely shoot and, and, and Ligrid has taken all of that on board. Hoffer, Pfeiffer, Bo, Phil Maillet, Samuelson, they will not have given up on the chance, the hope of getting a medal here in Pekuka, but uh, they're going to have to put in a perfect performance on the final shoot, no doubt about that. Ligrid, he doesn't miss very often. Is this going to prove his undoing? I very much doubt it. Jakob Fack probably has more pressure than anyone else might. He, he certainly has. He'll have self-pressure now, and he's suffering with the pace. Likely deciding to go up very early at 26 and a half minutes to try and damage the two still remaining with them. And, and these are the only athletes who've hit 15 out of 15, and they're at the front, of course. And Ligrid with a gold medal in the mixed relay, a gold medal in the individual, a gold medal in the men's relay, could make it four golds from one championships. 
Uh, Jakob Fack, well, Slovenia don't, haven't been anywhere near the podium so far, so that's uh, a great opportunity for them. And then what about Simon Ader? If he could win, Mike, Austria uh, getting a little bit of history with their first gold in the women's this morning. They have never won two golds on the same day. Yeah, that would be sensational. So Adra has placed himself in third place once before. Of course, that was uh, 2017 in Hochfilsen at home. It's quite different today in uh, Slovenia for him, but uh, looking good so far. Ada shot the 20 out of 20 in Oberhof. Uh, and he also shot 20 out of 20 in Hogfilson. So from three mass starts this season, uh, he's had the perfect score on uh, two thirds of them. If he can make it three quarters, it might possibly go to him. But I'm just wondering whether Ada Mike uh, could hold on to a 150 meter lead should he come out with that. Uh, the way that Ligrid, if Ligrid hits all five, the way he's uh, skiing here, it, it would be tough for Ada to try and match this pace. Now I'm wondering whether Ada is going on uh, Tadia Bo's tactics from Oberhof, where he said, OK, if I can get 15 second lead before the last shoot, I can afford to miss one. And I've still got a chance of catching the leaders on the final lap. It worked for Tadia Bo. Would it work for Ligrid? Should that turn out to be the case? I think the coach just shouted to Ligrid. It's 10 seconds now. His lead uh, coming into the range will get that timing as they do come into the or come past lane 30. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether Jakob Fack has said, OK, a medal is good enough. If it's gold, fantastic. But uh, he's just going to race his own race. And Simon Ada looks quite happy just to sit behind the Slovenian and bring the pulse down as low as possible for the final shoot of the final race of these 2021 Biathlon World Championships. Will it be Norway? Will it be the host nation Slovenia? Or will it be Austria who come through to take the glory? Possibly they'll all miss and someone else will come through. Here we go. The leading three all have the perfect score. There's the first mistake from Ligrid. An opportunity for Fack and Ada. And Simon Ada will have sensed that. Four out of five. Is it going to be good enough? Fack is slow, giving away a little bit of time, but he's still clean. Ada has missed, as you can see. One more for the Slovenian. Can he make it five oh. out of five? No, he can't. The gold medal slip his fingers and a very very small opportunity for Hoffer and Pfeiffer to come through and claim a medal that mistake from Fack I think has handed the goal to Ligrid he's the quickest of those leading three that bike was so so close we'd love to see the close-up just to see how many millimeters he missed by Pfeiffer three misses twice oh, the three of the best shots in the world all missing one there that, that was a real surprise for me Phil Maia is the first man to clear five, and he might be on the chase. Uh, I'm not sure what's the margin going to be. A 10-second gap. He might fancy a, a, a chase down of Ada and Fack. Uh, he may be thinking in terms of silver, Mike. It's still a long way to go. I think I think Phil Maia will only have one thing on his mind, and that is chasing silver. He knows that those ahead of him, the two ahead of him, are not as fast as he is, and that'll give Phil Maia some energy. Ligrid missing low right, which is exactly what happened. I think, was it in the relay? He missed one shot that went low right as well. That's something the coaches will look at and try and improve. Fack, where did this last shot go? Any guesses, Mike? High right, low right? Going low, surprisingly. Low left, maybe. Low right. Oh, that is such a pity. 19 hits, the very final shot, the most important shot of the whole race, and it got to Jakob Fack. Well, there's a little bit of cat and mouse going on with Ada and Fack. They have got to be aware that Phil Maia is behind them. They just cannot afford to relax at all. Ligrid is safe, and he gets uh, at this dead turn, gets the opportunity to see exactly where the opposition are. He knows his fourth gold is coming his way. Fack needs to wind it up, because a battle between him and Phil Maia uh, would be... <laughs> is not what he wants over the last kilometre. Now he'll see where the Frenchman is. Oh, the Fiat Maia is the ultimate working machine, the attack machine. He's not going to let this go lightly. He sees them both ahead of him. The prayer just up there, and I think he's going to get both of them. 
Well, I wonder how Ada felt when he saw my A when he came around that corner, Mike. Sometimes it can just make your knees go a little bit weak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and the momentum there. Fear my A has only missed two, so his skiing speed isn't quite as strong as normal in the early stages, but now he's chasing a medal. I don't think there's anyone out there who does not want Slovenia to come away with a medal. That seems to be on a country, a Sunday stroll, Mike. I'm just waiting for him to change gear. Oh, maybe he's thinking tactics. Uh, if Fio Maie catches me, I'll, I'll stay with him and try and get him on the line. Well, he missed one today, but... Both Ada and Fact did Liger in a favour by missing as well. And it means he's got uh, a decent margin. 9.7 seconds he had. That looks to have built to at least 15, maybe even more, because Liger is not hanging around. Can you imagine your first ever World Championships and he's going to walk away with four gold medals? What an outing. <laughs> oh, no. where, where does he go from here? Maybe it's time to change, change careers already. He's, he's only 24. And I tell you what, he comes from Yaila, which is predominantly a downhill town in uh, Norway. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of kids there taking up biathlon over the next 12 months. The bad news for Eder and Fack is that, of course, Johannes Dahl is there as well. And uh, there goes the medals already, practically. Yeah. It's not over yet, though. Yeah, I think uh, I think Fack is a spent force. Try to stay with uh, Ligrid on that last loop, Mike. There's absolutely no fight in him. And uh, over the years, it's his skiing that has been his trump card. What a pity. What a pity. Uh, that last shot would have would have helped, without a doubt, to go out ahead of Ligrid. But it, it wasn't to be. And Talia Bo is on the charge, just trying to make sure of uh, his position in the Master World Cup standings. Uh, he's certainly going to pull away from his brother, who's had a poor day. Johannes Tingis Bo at the last count, uh, just trying to, he was down in 11th, I suspect. He's got himself up into the top seven or eight. Yeah, Johannes Daly isn't going to let the silver medal go easily. It's still a long way to go. There are. Eder's still there. It's sad that Jakob Fack has run out of energy. Now, the Norwegians have been beaten by the French on numerous occasions over the last two or three years when it's come to the sprint finish. Dale, is, he's a strong beast, Mike. I think uh, he might fancy a crack at Field Maé. And that little dip down into the stadium, so crucial. Oh, it is. Uh, it will be a tactical final. Italia Bruce certainly has great pace here, but the gap is just a little too much, and we're running out of track. Yeah, for a 32-year-old, he is putting in a good shift today, as we see Ligrid through 14.1. 900 metres to go. The margin last time we saw him at 13.4 was 24.4. There's no way he'll lose this if he stays on his feet, but he's not going to let up for an instant. No racing to go. Now comes a move from uh, Johannes Dali. Can Phil Maye respond to that? Simon Ada certainly can't. Oh, Simon Ader, he's two days away from his 38th birthday, and uh, with, what, 900 metres to go, he's running out of pace. Yeah, so... Uh... Dale doing what Simon did to Roisland, to Ekhoff in the uh, in the single mix relay, Mike. Yeah, uh, Dale is uh, desperate for another medal, uh, and I'm sure he would have been disappointed to have been uh, left out of the relay. That could have been another goal, but he's chasing the silver, and it looks like it's nearly round his neck. Well, what a day, what a weekend for Norway. Two gold medals in the relays. This morning in the women's mass start, they took the uh, silver and the bronze. And today they're going even better, or this afternoon going even better. They're going to get gold for sure, and they might even get the silver as well. That will take their tally up to 13 medals. What a sensation Ligre it is. Uh, he's so masterful through the rifle. Pressure, maybe it got to him there, but he, he's human after all. He's been incredible through the rifle all season. Yeah, the spring has gone from the legs, but no surprise after racing six times at these world championships. Didn't race in the single mixed relay. Had he done so, I think Norway might have taken the gold in that event as well. And he claims Norway's eighth gold medal. No one else has had a look in. Sorry, seventh gold medal. I was uh, assuming they'd won this morning.
easy to do. Dale wins the sprint between himself and Phil Mayer. What a battle. What a good ski from Dale. Coming out of the range, he was 28.9 behind. So 18 seconds gained. Brilliant from Simonada. Lovely to see him shooting. If, if he got that last shot, Mike, uh, he still might have got caught, but it would have been a much closer race. And Jakob Fack did so well to try and get Slovenia their first medal of the championships. It didn't quite come off, but uh, he'll be the talk of the town tonight. Oh, he will. Johannes Tinges, poor how does he do it? He's back up into eighth position. Five misses, five times around that penalty loop, 750 metres added to his distance, and he's still only 45 seconds off the winning time set by his teammate Ligrid. And I wonder, Mike, Ligrid now the favourite to win the overall this year? It's looking that way more and more. Uh, for me, it is. Uh, Johannes Tignesbord needs to find feeling and confidence through his rifle, or I think it will be this man, uh, Ligrid, who will take the, the overall. <laughs> The two men who are on the podium in the individual are on the podium again in the mass start. Not quite the same medals. Uh, Dali is upgraded to the silver. So Norway getting gold and silver in the men's mass start to wrap up what for them has been a tremendously successful meet. Uh, and the pecking order remains the same as last year. Norway won, France two in terms of the medal table. Benny Dole might missing uh, missing six on the day. Um, Jacqueline, is he going to finish? He's missed five in total. Uh, all of those on one shoot. Extraordinary, quite, quite extraordinary. He, uh, he's a long way back, isn't he? So his spirit completely broken, missing those five. He's five minutes behind. I think he's still out on track. What about Christian Gow? I think a special mention there. That's a great result, uh, finishing in 12th position. Yeah, just one shot missed by Christian Gao. That was excellent. Uh, had he gone clean, then he was looking at a top five result for Canada. So Norway will have enjoyed winning the sprint for the silver medal. Uh, Jacqueline Fion Maillet. And of course, the French women have uh, certainly been one up in terms of the last. 200 metres of races over the last couple of years. And uh, that was good tactics from Dale, but my goodness, he looks really strong, Mike. And uh, I wonder whether he's going to be a contender for the overall next year. He sees, he's had a really strong season, has few bad days, and I think that's the limiting factor. Reduce your bad, bad days uh, in any one time into the range. And Dale is pretty good. He's missed two today. I've just seen that Christian Gow is 11th. I said he was 12th. 11th is fabulous with one penalty. Benny Dole, five misses, uh, six misses, uh, in fact, for the German. And uh, were it not for Arndt Pfeiffer, Mike, the oldest man in the German team, I, I think the whole squad might get a sack. It's, it hasn't been a great championship. Pfeiffer came good, of course, uh, in the in the individual hitting all 20 and maybe they'll have to start looking at uh, different coaching uh, an injection of inspiration or a change often you need a change when when it isn't going well here he is Well, Chatelain, uh, spirit broken to come in on your second, having shot perfectly first time in, then you miss five. He hasn't really been able to find his way back into the race. He does need to finish uh, to pick up his points, 30th position points. Brothers Burke, uh, only two places separating them, but uh, rather than being both on the podium, they're down in sixth and eighth today. And uh, what's rather more extraordinary is they're the third and the fourth best Norwegians. Uh, the youngsters uh, certainly winning the day, Mike. Ligrid and Dale both outstanding. Uh, Ligrid missing one shot on the last shoot. And Dale, of course, did two penalty loops. So to get within 10 seconds of Ligrid, astonishing. Very, very much indeed. And, and one constant in the whole race, the course times, the lap times, one, two, three, four, and five. Johannes Tingisburg has set the fastest time on each of them, and uh, Johannes Dali uh, has set the second fastest time.
In fact, Johannes Daly, sorry, took one of the fastest laps, and that was uh, in the final lap, uh, as expected, when he was chasing that silver. Well, I think in terms of the overall World Cup, it's still a two-horse race in the men's tour. Uh, Johannes Tingsberg moves on to 8-7-1, Ligrid on 8-3-9, so 32 points between them. Uh, but do, don't forget that slightly different rules this year in terms of the number of races that will be negated at the end of the season. Four will be taken away, and that actually plays into the hands of Ligrid at the moment. Well, Chacalan, this looks painful. He's, uh, he's torturing himself even more. Yes, it's a Sunday stroll, but uh, mentally, he's had a tough time out there. He's shooting 0 5 zero, zero. And, and I think, Patrick, from the whole championships, he's emotional, he's upset, he's... He's not having a great time, but I think from the whole championships, his single performance uh, in the pursuit was the most outstanding performance with the attacking self-belief. He hit all 20 that day. Hasn't worked out today for him. Yeah, you, you put that above Ligrid's individual race? I do, just the manner in which, uh, in which, uh, in which he, he did it. You know, Jacqueline attacked from the word go. Never looked like he was ever going to miss. And I, I do from third up into first. <laughs> he's having a good chat. Yeah, he's not, not a happy man, but uh, <laughs> he might as well just take it easy. No point uh, wasting energy at this stage with those five loops after the second shoot. Uh, we saw tears at the women's race. I think, uh, I think a few have been trickling down his cheeks over the last uh, 10 minutes or so. So, so disappointed. Uh, but had that happened in the pursuit, Mike, it would have been even worse because that is the event that he'd been dreaming of. That was the event that he psyched himself up for. And even on the podium for the sprint, his biggest joy was not the medal. It was the fact that he was in a brilliant position to attack on the pursuit. And that's exactly what he did. So there are the top ten. Ligrid, Dale, Phil Maillet taking one, two and three. Ada and Fack, who were in second and third after that last shoot, both missing out on this occasion. Nothing left in the legs, having tried to chase down Ligrid for the previous three laps. Pfeiffer, it all went slightly wrong on the stand. I thought he may shoot a little bit better today. Christian Gao, definitely worth a mention. A brilliant 11th for the Canadian. Benny Dole missing too many to be competitive. And the same for Jacqueline, as you can see at the bottom.